everyone. I'm going to move this center like a diva. Um, hello. Oh my gosh, it's a unicorn room. I'm so excited. Um, <laughs> so, okay. So I don't, okay, I'm just going to get right into it. Did you know that in Texas it is illegal to make realistic dildos? <laughs> the thing. But, I mean, it's also illegal to own more than six dildos. <laughs> yeah, that, I thought the same thing. It, really, the only thing I have left to think about is, what the fuck is going on in Texas? <laughs> they have to make not one, but two very specific dildo laws. Like, were they, like, wearing them, like, charms around their neck? <laughs> or are they, like, walking down the street? invading people's personal space and going and like mine is bigger than yours like what the fuck are they doing in Texas that these laws were like oh yeah we better make those up I don't know so I'm gonna just I just I'm glad I live in California where my baker's dozen is safe so I'm single and um, I like to do a lot of research on being single and people that are in relationships and trying to make that all work out. And I read this article, and it's a legit article, guys. Okay, I promise. It's a legit article. It's not from, like, BuzzFeed or Wikipedia. It's, like, real, okay? So there's this woman in Ohio, and she has been in an eight-year monogamous sexual relationship with Bigfoot. <laughs> We all have questions. So I read the article, you're welcome. And uh, what I learned is this. When asked, how did you two meet? That, oh, that has to be the first question we ask, right? How did you two meet? She goes, I was tending my marijuana garden. And he came up from behind. I held up my shotgun and he threw his hands in the air. And that's when I noticed the very large erection between his legs. I hadn't gotten any in a while. And from there it turned into an adult movie. What? <laughs> My favorite quote of that story is, he did me from behind, it felt great. What? <laughs> yeah, so, um, let's just digest that for a minute, okay? And let's table the fact that it's Bigfoot. <laughs> let's table the fact that it's an interspecies sexual relationship. How the fuck am I still single? <laughs> there is a woman in Ohio with an eight-year committed monogamous relationship with Bigfoot. And all I ever get are guys on Tinder wanting to send me dick pics. I mean, I do, I do love a good dick pic. <laughs> I'm sorry. I do, I do. I know every man in this room just went, oh, really? <laughs> well, every girl in this room just went, ew, that is so gross. <laughs> and I get it, ladies. I totally agree with you that. When my cell phone goes off and it goes, bring, and I go, ooh, I have a text. I open my phone up and I go, ah! Because you're never expecting the dick pic. So my first thought is, ugh. But my next thought is, oh, he's thinking of me. <laughs> and I save them. <laughs> all of them. I have a special folder in my phone. It is for all of my dick pics that I have gathered up over the years. And I've decided that since I've been, this wonderful gift has been given to me by so many men, I know that sounds terrible, but it's, it, never mind, let's just move on. Um, <laughs> but we, um, I decided I want to give back to the community. So I decided that I'm going to do, like, artwork. <laughs> so if you send me a dick pic, just know it's going to be artwork. <laughs> but it's not going to be, like, fun, like, weird, quirky, contemporary, you know, 2016 artwork. No, 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 no. I'm doing throwback artwork. Do you remember in the 90s when you used to walk in the mall and you would see that random art gallery? And outside they'd have that easel with the picture on it that if you stared at it long enough, a sailboat popped out? <laughs> That's what I'm doing with your dick pics. So if you want to be a part of this installation, gentlemen, let me know. Okay. Um, yeah, so, needless to say, I did just move here from New York. I was, living, New York. I was living in New York for the last 11 years, and so I haven't had to, like, physically own a car, like I've driven over that 10 years, but I never owned a car and drove daily. And now that I'm out here, I'm driving daily. And LA is screwed up, man. Like, I get it, the traffic, and rah, 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 people bitch about it all the time. My problem, my biggest problem with LA are those damn meters getting on the freeway. Yeah, and I, this happened to me just the other week. I was pulling up, it's rush hour, getting on the freeway, 
No one's happy about that already. I pull up and I see that it's red. And when I stop my car and I look over and I can't see the light anymore, it's like facing this way. And I'm like, what the hell is this light? Like, is it turned yet? Like, what's it doing? I was like, well, shit. I'm stuck here. I can't see the light. <laughs> and I think to myself, well, I, I mean, I've been here like 10, 15 seconds. Doesn't that how long it changes? Maybe if I just slowly roll forward, once I cross the line, it will have turned green and I can just go. Logic. Okay? <laughs> so, needless to say, I start doing that. I'm like, that's perfect. So I start rolling forward, inching slowly, and I'm getting, and my car is across the line, okay? There's point of no return. And that's when I notice the other light, you know, the one that's facing me, <laughs> that's still red. And I went, ah, screw it, no one cares. The cop behind me cared. <laughs> and he pulls me over on the on-ramp in rush hour. So I, needless to say, I take my hair down, adjusted the girls, and I rolled down my passenger side window. Hi, officer! Afternoon! Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Do you know why I pulled you over? Oh, no, officer. I have no idea. <laughs> You ran a red light. Oh my God, I am so sorry. Oh my God, okay, so here's what happened. Okay, so when I pulled up, it was red, but I thought it turned green, so I started to go, but it was really red, and I didn't want to cause an accident, so I went. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Yes, it does, it was red, but I thought it was green, but it was really red, so I went. <laughs> okay, ma'am. Just for further notice, red means stop, <laughs> and green means go. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes, I am so sorry, officer. It will never happen again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no ticket. <laughs> Bam, I'm a road warrior! So now that I've got this new power as a road warrior, I decide I'm gonna transform that power into belting as many songs out as I can in my car. We all sing in our cars. I love singing in my car. And I've been singing this song for a few years now in general, but in my car I sing it a lot. Like I'll just hit back and just keep singing it. I'm one of those people. And uh, it's, that, it's a song that everyone should know because it was really irritating for a while. Um, it was really popular, oversaturated in our system. Uh, that Cup song from Pitch Perfect. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, well, here's the thing, I, I was singing the wrong words, and let me just sing what I was singing, and then we can discuss, okay? So the song that I was singing was, when I'm gone, when I'm gone, you're gonna miss me when I'm gone, you're gonna miss me by my walk, you're gonna miss me by my taco. I thought she was singing about her vagina. <laughs> Yeah, I thought this was like a woman power song. Why? Because she only says it once in the whole song. If you listen to it, she talks about how you're going to miss my hair and my flair and my walk, but she only says taco once. Mic drop. <laughs> and I'm watching YouTube videos going, do these kids not know what they're singing about? Has no one warned them? Why is no one saying anything? Turns out the lyrics are, you're going to miss me by my walk, you're going to miss me by my top comma O. Punctuation is important. <laughs> And I should have thought about that, thinking that everyone else was singing it and not having a problem. And I was the only one that was like, what's going on in the world? <laughs> so yeah, um, there are new things in Hollywood that I'm trying to figure out. Um, one of the things is celebrities. Like, I lived in New York for 11 years, and we don't care, okay? <laughs> it's, it's literally, you walk or get out of the way. Okay, so you walk. I'm walking down the streets in New York for 11 years, and people are like, "Oh my God, you totally just checked Gwyneth Paltrow." And I was like, "The bitch was in the way." <laughs> you know what I mean? And I love her. No, you're not bitch. I'm like the bitch, but bitch. You know what I mean? Um, and like, you know, it's like Al Pacino, get out of the way. You know what I mean? Like, we don't care. We're just there. That's why celebrities love New York because no one cares about them. Out here, it's very different. And I found my first celebrity. I was very excited because I'm a total dork that way, as I normally never notice them. I saw Caitlyn Jenner. Oh boy. Caitlyn Jenner in Hollywood. Yeah. Turns out it was just a woman who looked like Bruce Jenner. <laughs> I know. My dears, that's my time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Seth, for having us.